Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering into a place, a zone called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. Fine people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, as always, welcome back to the Investigative Journal. I'm Greg Anthony on this Monday. Get the week started right. And this show basically is all about the money. Show me the money. Show me the Vatican finances. Please do that, will you? They're good at hiding things and things like uh, offshore accounts, but we're going to get to the bottom of it. And what really inspired me to do a show like this was a couple emails I got over the weekend. And one was this. A listener said, Greg, why haven't you covered the pedophilia story in Pennsylvania where 300 uh, priests were outed as being pedophiles and over a thousand children have been uh, raped or abused over the last, I don't know, 20 years? And then I received another one stating, Greg, could you please explain what's your thoughts about the pedophile abuse in Pennsylvania. And so let me answer that first. What else is new? (laughs) As if I didn't, you know, to talk about the first email, the reason I didn't talk about it yet, this, this broke last Wednesday or Thursday, is that frankly I'm tired of it. I mean, this is just the story, uh, it's like Groundhog Day. Every day you hear of another Vatican pedophile problem, And, you know, since the 80s, I've been covering these things from satanic worshiping in the Vatican all the way through all of their genocides of the Native Americans in Canada, Native American children in Canada and the United States, as well as pedophile rings out the yin-yang all over the world, Ireland. Uh, You name a country and you'll find a whole bunch of pedophile priests. So this is nothing new. And I had to laugh. And I guess I shouldn't laugh over this, but it's just like, it, it, you know, why didn't I cover it? Because what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing. You're going to hear of another one in uh, another, you know, two months. There'll be another big one somewhere. And the Vatican always has its pat answer. They'll put on a priest who they put on Fox News, a priest, to discuss this. Oh, I'm very sorry. This is a stain upon the church. We'll take care of it. The Vatican puts out a story. Oh, we're very saddened over this and we'll take care of it. But you know, they don't take care of it. They cover it up and they've been doing this for hundreds of years. So excuse me for not covering it as I think I've covered enough over the years. And to, to put injury to insult, I'm so tired of people just overlooking it. And what's going to happen? Oh, you're going to get stories on the internet like this that are more important to all you truth seekers out there. Yes, here's what will happen. I got an email today from a guy who wrote a story about uh, the downfall of America is coming this year. And they're going to destroy America this year. And Alex Jones, that famed truth teller, is like Paul Revere. Look at how he's being persecuted. And I had to laugh, a big laugh. I said, do you realize he works with the deep state? He works with the Vatican. He works with COINTEL. And that, don't you think this is a setup? They're planning this right now. They're coming down on him so they could really get to everybody else. And he's running to the bank, making millions of dollars. And by the way, he might not even be Alex Jones. We've talked about that many times, but who cares? He could be Bill Hicks. But he works with them folks, so don't be Tate. Paul Revere? (laughs) Boy, I'll tell you, I'm so happy I'm involved in the truth community. What a group that has gone astray, so to speak, over the years. And the more information that comes out, the more confused people get. And the worse, the farther they get from the truth, so I'm giving up be honest with you. If I never cover a Vatican pedophile story again, it won't be too soon. Because let me tell you, nothing gets done. I remember when I was so naive in the beginning thinking, if I do these stories, someone will come to the rescue. 
But satanic worshiping still goes on there. It goes on all over the place here in America, in Hollywood and wherever you want to look. It's getting worse. And then when I started doing the pedophile thing, trying to get to the bottom of pedophile rings years ago, I figured, well, they'll get, they'll stop. The hell they will. They'll get worse. They're getting worse. So I think the more you cover it, the worse they get. You know these people are sick. There's nothing you can do about it. The mainstream media will pull out a story like this 300 people in, you know, priests in Pennsylvania, and everybody will go, oh boy, there's a couple bad eggs in the Catholic Church. We've got to do it. And the, the parishioners will go to the pews and they will start donating money to this organization that is evil from the core. And don't give me this, there's a good side, there's a bad side. Of course, there's low-level priests who know nothing. My advice to them, get the hell out. My advice to you nuns, get, get out of your robes before they take them, before the priests take them off. <laughs> that's my advice to you nuns. And that's serious, because these people, you know, and I, that's why I didn't cover the story, and that's my take on it. So there you go. And for those who emailed, I hope I answered it. But you know what will happen? All the people, outside of the way they make their money in corporations, now the Vatican I'm talking about, the Jesuits, all of them, the way they make their money under the table through drugs. Remember the time I interviewed one of the big mafia bosses or uh, one of the underlings of the mafia boss, a godson of uh, Carlo Gambino, uh, Tony Gambino. He said, you know, the... Th the two, the two organizations that profit more from the drug trade are, one, the government and the Vatican, not the mafia bosses. Okay, we make our cut, but you got to remember those people, too. So let's not, uh, let's not look at this as uh, something that uh, will ever change what's going on. The story is going to get washed away. The Vatican will put out some kind of, you know, we're sorry, we'll take care of the victims, and then they'll just do it all over again, and it'll get worse. So that's my take on it. And what you got to do is follow the money. And the sad thing about it is that all these people that are still financing, you know, how many, of, how many people in corporations really understand that many of these, the holdings and a lot of your companies go right directly to uh, offshore accounts in the Cayman Islands, the Vatican involved in them? Nobody knows. And I mentioned a long time ago, the richest organization in the world is who I talk about here, the Vatican and the Jesuit order, who is their military arm. They're assassins to be, you know, every day they're out looking to make more money, kill more people that are going to get to the truth. And then they got their cover up people like Alex Jones and others in the media leading you down another path. So I don't have any you know, sympathy for any of you people unless you start really understanding who these guys are and where, you know, so I said, let's follow the money. You don't believe me? Look, I've covered a few stories along the years regarding people who tried to get to the truth about Vatican finances. One in a law case that uh, after 10 or 15 years, the, the beautiful Ninth Circuit, those criminal judges, and uh, like uh, Sherman Skulnick once said, the late Sherman Skulnick, the most dangerous species in America is an honest judge. And the higher you go up to the court system, the worse they are. And guess what they did? There was a lawsuit against the Vatican finances, and they said in their wisdom, after 10 years of stringing this long, hey, did you realize the Vatican doesn't do business in the United States? Give me a break. And everybody will just listen to them. You know, just go play with your you-know-what under your robes, Ninth Circuit, because that's all you're good for. So anyway, uh, follow the money. I said a long time ago, and there are many people that will back this up, that the Vatican is the richest organization in the world. Why do you think that our presidents go running to the Vatican kissing their ring and all the other heads of state all over the place? Well, it's because they are the richest organization, and politicians, like bees to a hive, always go where the money is, and they'll do anything to get it. So... Let's look at it in terms of finances. We're talking about the Vatican. You want to talk about the money? Work, give me, show me the money. Religious institutions, did you realize this, can function as unregulated onshore tax havens, subsidized by taxpayers to pursue the what? The supernatural. Yes, to pursue your hopes and dreams that after you die, you're going to go somewhere nice. That's how they make their money. And if they are Catholic institutions, they can send money you know, to offshore tax havens. 
of the Vatican State because it's not only an organi religious organization. For those of you who don't know, it is a secular organization and it's a country. But it doesn't end there. The Vatican itself has an offshore tax haven in the Cayman Islands, to give you an example. Let me give you some verification here. In 2015, a book on Vatican finances appeared, which has really impressed the watchers of the Vatican and financial analysts alike. The review of Gian, uh, Gianluigi Nunzi, Merchants at the Temple, was published in Fortune magazine. So it got to, uh, you know, the tip of the iceberg here, let's say. Mr. Nunzi, Nunzi got to the tip of the iceberg, because I'll tell you, there's a whole hell of a lot more. They won't let be published. Now, another source of information is the bankruptcy proceedings of American dioceses, which were forced to compensate victims of, chair, uh, of uh, we we'll call it uh, pedophilia, child abuse. These have shed some light on the finances of the U.S. Church, but this is the tip of the iceberg as well. And uh, there's a book, uh, there's an article in The Economist, 2012, called The Catholic Church in America, Earthly Concerns. I'll be honest with you, when they pay out $200 million, that's nothing to them. That's like chump change. Yeah, that's about how much money they really have. They don't care. <laughs> pay out $200 million. We got another billion and billion and billion somewhere. And the reason they pay it out is to, you know, they'll have a clause in there that the victims can't talk about it, and the, and the newspapers go away. If the newspapers and the, and the media spent their time doing serious stories, this organization, I assure you, would not exist in this country. But they have to exist because the newspaper company works with them. That's the problem. Of course, the Vatican, and the real problem is people just leave the Vatican out of this whole discussion. And that's what I really uh, object to. And that's why I get so sick and tired of the truth movements, because they really are never going to get to the point. And they're just going to, you know, everybody will go off in their own little direction. Hey, I want, it's like, kind of like this. You got a thing you like in the world? What do you like? Okay, you want to help save the animals. Okay. I want a clean air, so I'm going to join the chemtrail truth movement. I want to get truth for 9-11. I'll go to the 9-11 truth movement. And on and on and on, everybody's going to pick out their own little truth movement. And what's going to happen? You're going to find that it's going to be infiltrated. And in the end, you're never going to get to the truth anyway. Oh, you'll learn about chemtrails. You'll learn about how dogs are being abused. You'll learn all this stuff. You'll learn you want to get into the environmental protection. You'll learn a lot. But in the end, you won't get anywhere. Because no one is dealing with the root cause. And the root cause is right here. The Vatican Bank. Institute for Religious Works, they call it. The hell is that? Institute for Religious Works. They do nothing religious. Outside of kill people. And then say they'll exonerate them. I love the Vatican and the, and the confessional. Oh, listen. You can kill somebody, but if it's, if it's for the Pope's own good, we can exonerate you. So don't worry about it. What do you think that with John Wilkes Booth and all those conspiracy guys got off? Yeah, the Vatican said, hey, you're doing something good. You got to kill this guy, Lincoln, but in the end, we can exonerate you're going to go to heaven anyway. <laughs> Isn't that a crock? Now, until three international monetary watchdogs, oh, this is good, began applying. There's some pressure coming on them now. The Murky Institute for Religious Works had secret accounts, no audits, and records destroyed after 10 years. But now they say that there are audits. Bullshit. Uh, yeah, they'll do a, you know, you ever know how to cook the books? That's what they do now. So they figured they were getting so much pressure. And Alpern v. Vatican Bank, that case that I talk about, and go look it up because I spent years working with it, uh, it showed you they have no accountability in the Vatican Bank. None. But then again, why worry about it? Because according to the beautiful and the, and the great jurists of the Ninth Circuit, guess what? They don't even do business here, so why worry about it? Isn't that a crock? Now, to keep using the euro, this is an interesting story. The Vatican agreed in 2009 to submit to the anti-money laundering laws of the European Union, <laughs> but has only done the minimum demanded of it. Think about it. They, they got these money laundering laws now. So the Vatican, to use the euro, had to agree. But then they got under the table and they said, well, we're just going to do this. And we'll 
let people think we're transparent when they're not. It issued its first ever. I mean, that's in the history of the Vatican since the year zero or whenever they came into being. 2,000 years. They've never released a financial report until 2013. Oh, so now they're clean. Yeah, right. And now its own financial accountability body is shielding it from its own scrutiny anyway. That's right. So they put out this bogus, oh, we're, we're accountable now. Here's our, you know, it's like me going, okay, I think I'll make up my finances today. How much did I make? Uh, $10. And how much did I spend? Oh, one, uh, nine, $11. And this is my financial report. It's not verified. They just came up with one to say, hey, we want to keep using the euro and all their cronies in polit politics are allowing them to do it because they're making money off of them and they're all stealing and running to the bank. And now, guess what? Once they come forward with this accountability thing, they're shielding it from any kind of scrutiny. So anyway, and guess what? Pope Francis says, I am making this an accountable business. Yeah, BS. This guy's as crooked as they come. And you can take that to the bank, Pope uh, Francis, whatever your lad of, of, of CC or whatever. Now, what about these secret costs of papal visits? To be, to be honest with you, let's just start with a little one here. Both sides try to keep the costs of papal visits hidden from the taxpayers. You remember when the Pope came here and went dancing all over the place with kids? And the, how much did that cost? Oh, it doesn't matter. He's God on earth. It doesn't matter. We can spend millions of taxpayer money. But what if you're not a Catholic and you don't believe that he's God on earth? You still got to pay? Yeah. The security costs alone, the largest item by far, never seem to be included in published government figures of the Vatican trips. And he's always traveling somewhere. Where is he going now? I bet she doesn't go back to Argentina much. He'd go, you know, if, the, if truth be known, he'd be standing trial. He'd be in jail. And it has been revealed, unless it, you know, if it wasn't crooked, just like in America. And it has been revealed. And well, if I look at what the Australian government declared the total expenses to be a state secret. And it has been revealed that to pay for the Pope's state visit, the British government quietly diverted money meant for aid to the world's poorest people. Yeah, so they give the money to the rich people and then they hide it. What about, uh, well, how much time we got here? Oh boy, I could go on forever. 1728, we got into our segment, so we got a little bit of time. How about Spanish Catholics protest new way to hide papal visit costs? The Pope visited Spain in 2011 for the Catholic Church's World Youth Day. I think it was here in America too. Did anybody put up a stink about that or want to know? Oh, that's a sin to try and say the Pope trip cost the taxpayers money. That is a state secret. In May of two, in the, recently, the jobless rate among Spain's generally well-educated young people reached nearly 45 percent, a record in any industrialized country. Despite this lost generation, a huge religious festival was staged at public expense, with the Pope's wealthy corporate sponsors only paying for 20 percent of their donations. So these kids don't have a job, they're going to this youth festival, and they're paying the bill for this rich pope, who really needs the money, by the way. Don't you realize they're poor, they tell you? He's, a, he's the pope of the poor, except he's wealthy. How does, does that make any sense? Church, state, and money. How Italy, oh, great Italy, subsidizes the Vatican. The Vatican Secretary of State objected to the publication of these revealing articles, telling the Italian newspapers, let's stop this, we can't have this transparency, but he has not disputed their accuracy. Here is the complete groundbreaking series. You gotta go to this. Just look for groundbreaking series. The La Repubblica did something, as well as updates on Europe's belated move to challenge Italian subsidies to the church under the EU competition rules. 11 articles specially translated for, uh, you know, that you'll find. You can go to, uh, go to a place called Concordant Watch. I'm getting a lot of this information from there, as I like to do. Concordant Watch is a good website if you want to get to the nuts and bolts of who these guys really are. 
And uh, you can read Church and State Money, how Italy subsidizes the Vatican. You'd be surprised. How about Germany? I'm bringing this up. I know this for a fact. Germany get, subsidizes the Vatican to this day. Why? Because they were behind Hitler. And that, that agreement with uh, Hitler, the Concordat, never ended. How about this? The new indulgences. You know what they used to do in the old days? They go on their little donkeys or horses around the poor towns, and they find people, they go into a shop and say, put your money into the church and we'll say prayers so that your loved one who died last month can go to heaven. And when you go to heaven, the more you pay, we'll pray for you too. We'll put up candles and they'd get indulgences. Right? But did anybody realize they're a satanic organization? They don't want you to go to heaven. They want you to go to hell. If there is a hell, and they believe, you know, if they believe in hell, there's got to be a heaven. Uh, so here we go. What's white is black, what's black is white. So what are the new indulgences? The Vatican has stopped selling indulgences directly, but it still profits from offering this type of penance for one's sins. The pilgrimage for an indulgence may be booked through the Vatican's own travel agency, which books flights on the Vatican Airlines and rooms in one of its tax-exempt hotels and convents. <laughs> Uh, in fact, those who don't use the Vatican Travel Agency may even find themselves turned away from the Pope's audiences for pilgrims. And you believe these guys? That's what I'm talking about. None of this gets covered in the truth movement, so you go out with your chemtrails and preach for f clean air. Go out with your environmental group and preach for clean water. Go follow Alex Jones uh, and all of his truth stuff, even though he's a COINTEL guy. And you're never going to get to the bottom of it. You're going to have lousy water. You're going to have lousy air. And you're going to have Mr. Paul Revere himself, the biggest traitor ever here, Alex Jones, leading you down this primrose path to hell and back. That's the way it's going to be. So I don't have any sympathy for you. Put your money where you want to. Go right ahead. And you know what happens? The old saying, the rich get rich and the poor get poor. And, you know, hopefully you won't die without knowing some of the real truths. That's all my wish is. And then what are you going to do anyway? You're going to go up to what, I wonder what God's going to have to say about all this. You know, that's my interest. And I'm not dealing bad with him. What would he want, a non-thinking person down here? You know? I don't mind reading the Bible, but I can think too, you know, and I'd like to ask him some questions on my own. Is there anything wrong with that? Now, I, Ivorian president, from the Ivory Coast, I guess, uh, did a deal with God by the way of the Vatican Bank. Listen to this one. Realizing that taking money from the dictator of a poor country was a delicate matter, the Concordat was used by the Vatican to ensure financial secrecy. Enacted with no legislative assent, this agreement with the Vatican guarantees that the massive funds for a cathedral claimed to be from the president's private fortune, to be tax-free, secret, able to be sent abroad, and remain beyond the reach of the law. So what they did, they went to this little country, signed a concordat with a dictator, believe this? And then built the biggest cathedral in the world, and these people are starving. Are these people, do you believe the, do you believe the, the you know, what's they got? <laughs> oh, they got them, boy. They'll tell you a bunch of lies and they'll just laugh their way to the bank. And you know what? Most of these people will run to the pews and give them more money. Just lie to me more, please. More pedophilia and the more money you'll get. Back in three minutes on the investigative journal. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. 
If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border dot org c-r-o-s-s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org the following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the, by the supreme, supreme jesuit, jesuit command, command but stay on all people, people. Listen, listen up, up, and, up and, and you may you just, just learn, learn something, something. Okay, we're back for the second half hour, and we're following the money. Show me the money, Vatican. Come on, I was a member of your church for years. Be open, transparent. Doesn't the, Don't they say that in the Bible? Everything is an open book. How come you guys close your books all the time? And, you know, to make things, this is rich, really rich. I mean, don't you, don't you really love these guys? They go to this little, they go work with a dictator, build the biggest cathedral in the world on laundered money, take all of it, and they don't even give any to the poor. The poor people are still starving in this little island uh, community while the rich dictator signs an agreement with the uh, Vatican to build the biggest cathedral there, and they're paying for it. Right. Isn't that rich? I'm going to read a little more about it. But I did miss this story. What we're trying to do is show you, one, that the Vatican Bank launders money through Cayman accounts. They use the Vatican Bank as a money laundering operation because there's no controls on it. And you know what? They'll take anything for 10 to 15, I think it's 15%, right? So you're a drug dealer, you're making millions, you want your, and you got a close connection with the bishop in your community. You know, throw a couple hundred grand to him and then say, can you help me, Father? For I have sinned. I kill people with my drugs. 
but can you launder about a million dollars for me in the Vatican Bank? Can you, can you really help me out? Sure, my son, let me help you. And you know what? Say, 10 Our Fathers, 10 Hail Marys, and all your sins are forgiven. That's how it works. Yep, isn't it crazy? And no one in this country talks about it. Oh, it's just fine. They all do business with the Vatican. The Pope gets his ring kissed every time he comes here. If you ever wonder why when he comes to America, he kisses the ground and he'll go down to the airport, he gets off, and then he kisses the ground. It's not because he loves it. He owns it. It's his. That's why. He's saying, this is mine. I love you. Thank. Keep paying for this. I love this. And pay for his trip. The last time he came, you know how, mu how much money you think... It costs to take his security and all that. And who paid for it? You did, even if you're not a Catholic. And do you want to find out? No, it's a state secret. Why is it a state secret? Because they don't want to tell you how much money they're paying. And don't go too deep with these politicians because you're going to find out they're on the payroll too to keep this story from getting out. So that whole operation up there in Washington is all a fraud. Oh, you got a few congressmen that they come there and they do nothing and they do the bills and they pass this but nothing ever changes it gets worse look what you got over there now you got those so if you believe in the republican or democratic system two-party system functions you're crazy you got a republican president you got a republican congress you got a republican senate and they ain't doing shit no because that's what they're getting paid to do. They, they do a few good things here. Oh, America's great again. All that crap. But when it gets down to really doing something, what did they do for you? Did they fix your health care yet? Hell no. Because they don't want to. Because it's going to go to a single-payer system. It's going to be a socialist system in the future. So they say they can't get it done. Why? Because they don't want to get it done. And then they pass these tax cuts. You know how long that's going to last? until the next Democratic Congress gets in, which could be in about six months. Then they'll just change it back. And all these things Trump is doing, you know, with his pen, just like Obama. Obama goes in and he writes all these things in the executive orders. Then Trump comes in and changes it. And then guess what? The next guy will change that. And you go back and forth, you get nothing done. Why? Because the system, they both work for the same people. And did anybody ask... Why the Vatican has signed concordance with over 200 countries? 200. That's the beginning of it. And most of them, a lot of them came after the fall of the supposed wall. In, uh, and I'm not talking about the Mexican wall. I'm talking about the wall in uh, Berlin. Yeah. So you got deals. And what do they get for these deals? What's a concordant? It's a contract. It's not a, it's not a treaty. Because a treaty means that it has to be, you know, resolved and passed by the Congress. So everybody has to know about it. They don't want that. They've signed what's called an agreement or concordant. That means no one, you can go to your supposed democratic countries in Europe, go to Germany, go to Italy. They sign all these agreements, but not, they don't go to the, they get democratic approval because it's not a treaty. It's a concordant with this church giving them special treatment. Nobody else gets it. When they did this in America, let me, let me explain this to you, because most people are ignorant of this fact. And it takes me, you know, how much stuff do you got to go over? I mean, I don't know how many times I've done this story. And sometimes I wonder why doing it it goes one ear and out the other. Because people would rather listen to the bullshit on the Internet. That's right. That's the truth. The bullshit truth movements they'll listen to. And the reason is, is because it's easier. You know why it's easy? Because everybody picks their own. I want to stop clean air, so I'm going to go to chemtrails. But nobody will realize it hasn't changed. It's gotten worse since the 90s. And why? Because nobody deals with the root cause. So go and talk your head off about getting free air, you know, clean air, when you'll never get it. Unless you deal with the main people who are financing all this stuff and who are dealing with bringing these countries into disaster. Look what's going on in Europe. And nobody talks about this. So I wonder sometimes, why even do it? Why? You know, 
I was going to tell you, you know, about the money. You know, why, where, why, why 205, uh, how many concordants? Well, a concordant, like I said, is not a treaty. A treaty has to be, you know, passed by your local representatives and everybody has to know about it. This is an under the table deal. And they deal with dictators. They'll deal with the worst people in the world and supposed best people in the world who are actually worst people in the world too. All they do, the reason America gets away with all this is because they got the best advertising department in the world. But they're as crooked as any dictator around. But the Vatican deals with them. And why do they deal with the Vatican? Because they're the richest organization in the world, getting richer by day, every day. You would be shocked to know how many companies they're involved in. You would be shocked to know that basically, after they killed Lincoln, yes, the people back then decided to break off any diplomatic relationships with the Vatican. And that lasted, guess what? To your famed Ronald Reagan guy. I went to his... Uh, library. My brother lives right near there. And when I'm going through there, I enjoyed it. I like to see Ray. I, I was looking at all the things when he played football, but deep down I'm going, you sell out. I couldn't say it because he could probably get rested in there. Uh, he's the one that brought back the Vatican to uh, have diplomatic relations with the United States, even though they killed Lincoln. And if anybody questioned on it, which they won't, they would say something like, well, they've changed. Oh, really? They don't change. So, why 200? Why they get in, all they do is they get involved, like I did with this little town, this little uh, island, where everybody there is dirt poor. They get to this dictator who makes his money illegally, you know that, and they get together with the Vatican. They build the biggest. It's the biggest today. This is really true. <laughs> I'm not making it up. They have the. That's the biggest. Uh, church, cathedral in the world. And it's built in the poorest country in the world. Based And these people are starving. But they can go there and, and probably have to give them a goat or something, the Vatican, so they can go to heaven. Isn't that a bunch of... Isn't that, you, know, you know what it is? Let me say it, Raul. It's a crock of shit, is what it is. So, anyway... I was telling you... I missed a story here. We're talking about... So, 200 concordates... Under the table, you know, why in America do we give them these favors? Do you know when they signed, when they came back to get diplomatic relationships under Reagan, to get special favors from our government that you're paying for, you don't even know about, guess who sued them? The Protestants back then, they were still protesting a little back then. And the Jewish organizations said, why? You can't do this, America. You can't get involved with them and give them special favors. They're a religious organization. If you do that to them, you have to give it to us. Guess what that happened? The judges said, oh, no, 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 this is not, this is not a religious organization. We're dealing with the, the fight. We're dealing with the state of the Vatican. That's a state. So I said to the Jews, oh, you're a Jewish organization. You want the same treatment as the Vatican? Create a state. Like them. They, their state's about as big as a football field. Let's do one here or go somewhere and do it like they do. I, uh, don't you have a state in Israel? So there. How come you can't get the same favors? Or how come the Protestants can't start a state? It's crazy because they are in bed with this criminal organization. And they're criminals along with it because they know it and they're allowing it to happen. It's that simple. That's a conspiracy. Hell with Russia and Trump and Russia with Clinton. All that's just... Just, I, you know, that's just little stuff compared to this. So if the, you can't get that solved, if you can't get the Clinton problem solved with r all this crap, how do you expect you're going to get this solved? You won't. Look at what they did. Let me give you this. Land and money for the church while a quarter of Polish children go hungry. Yeah. Polish government can afford to subsidize the church influence in every corner of society. That's where my family comes from, I'm embarrassed. Uh, from chaplains throughout the civil service to holiday pay for monks and nuns, but's unable to provide free lunch, free school lunches for Polish children, a quarter of whom are malnourished. This is an itemized that list. You know, you want to see an itemized list of the state subsidies in Poland, 
as of 2008, let's get deep into this since it's my family's country. Like I said, they can afford to subsidize every, every aspect of the Catholic Church, chaplains in civil service, holiday pay for monks and nuns teaching religion in state schools, yet it's unable to provide free lunches for the Polish kids. This is as of 2008, and they, they reckon that over a quarter of children in Poland are hungry. Well, you know, don't look too far here in America, my friends, because you're going to see that we subsidize the Vatican here. And now, how many homeless people do you have here? And is anybody dealing with that? Okay, bring the Pope here and spend $5 million with his security force to be here two days, and then look at yourself in the eye at the people that are homeless in San Diego or any other city in this country. You can't. So if you don't deal with that, don't talk to me about solving hunger. It ain't going to happen. You can go and sit your ass down in a soup kitchen the rest of your life and feed the hungry and get donations, and you'll never solve the problem. It'll only get worse. And one of the reasons is just what I said. The money that's going to these crooks. More than a quarter of Polish children live in poverty. The highest rate in 27 nation European Union. This is due to widespread unemployment in large families. This is as of 2008. I'm sure it's, maybe it's got a, a tad better. Now, children have been reported fainting in class or scavenging scraps of food left by others. These t thin, apathetic children have trouble concentrating in school, often fall ill and are rejected by their classmates. The Polish government who is basically in bed with the Vatican, just like the American government, just like the Italian government, just like the uh, German government, and, and keep going. So you say to me, oh, they're not involved with the Vatican. Well, they are. Listen, if they weren't, why are they giving all the money to them and not helping their own kids? Because they are in bed with a criminal organization, and they are criminals as well. Did you know, you remember the big movement in Poland, Lech Walesa was the Polish hero? He was a bought and paid COINTEL guy, put there to do that. Free Poland, you know, de democratic system, bullshit. And excuse my English in this show, but you know, sometimes you just got to say it the way it is. And I ain't going to confession and saying, bless me, Father Five Sin, I said a few swear words on the radio. I have, you know, the FTC says I can say that. I can say a lot worse, so don't worry about it. So we got these thin, apathetic children, can't concentrate in school. They're undernourished, malnourished, but in the brilliance of the Polish government, they subsidize the Vatican rich guys. They give their monks paid uh, holidays. Despite the Polish government's huge donations to the church, not on top of that, it doesn't seem to be able to feed its hungry children even though a nourishing school meal only costs about two or three zlotys. That's a Polish, you know, peso or Polish dollar, or less than a single U.S. dollar. But they can't do it. The figures below come from Roman Kudlinski, editor weekly of Magazine of Facts and Myths, who gives no source for them. Other estimates include those of Catholic Information Agency, which claim the public financing of the church I mean, it's amazing. You're going to hear fixed cost. They got, they're paying for salaries. They're paying for, I, I mean, it's probably not different in a lot of countries. You know, and I'm not going to get into the Zlutskis, but they pay salaries, insurance, supple, rural supplements, over 42,000 books, Catholic books, 13,000 priests they're paying for, 1,500 monks, 3,500 nuns they're helping pay. They figure it's somewhere in the vicinity is 56 million, but they can't feed their kids. Subsidies towards church-run universities, fee pay, you know, and this goes on in America too. Chaplains, uh, Polish border guards, uh, 12 chaplains there, chaplains in the state fire service, the national prison service. They got chaplains all over the place. What about the people that aren't Polish or aren't Catholic? Do they get anything? How about a, 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 how come, this is, this is rich. All the money going to the cat. You know, do you know why they ever went into Poland? And that was to get rid of the eclectic Jewish 
uh, a group, which was the largest in Europe, estimated at over 3.5 million Jews living in Warsaw, and they had to wipe them out. So they could now, if you look at statistics, there's a couple hundred thousand Jews living in Poland. But they're all Catholic now. Now, how come the Jews can't get a, uh, you know, one of their people as a chaplain? Okay? How come it's only Catholic? It makes no sense, does it? Huh? Yeah. Because the Vatican pays, you know, they, they work together. They get donations from all over the world. That's just Poland. Imagine here. Imagine put together 200 countries and even more. And you say, why are they the richest country in the world? Well, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> I guess that's a good reason. You know? Unbelievable. How about this one? German taxpayers subsidize 98% of faith-based social services. The hidden wealth of the German Catholic Church. There's a lot to read. Millions for bishops. Why the German state pays the wages for ch the church? Nobody talks about it. Millions and millions of dollars, but they're letting everybody in, right? Every Muslim in to what? Destroy what? Western civilization as we know it. And guess what? The Vatican will be right there, as they were with the Nazis. What's this conscience clause? Vatican hobbles competing clinics from church rules. It can pay well to force church doctrines on the general public. The Vatican stands to profit from its moves to prevent the United Nations and national governments from funding birth control and abortion services. Keeping these out of the clinics removes the competitive disadvantage of the non-Catholic ones. For an example of this worldwide strategy, you got to go and look at it. Check it out. So much. Follow the money. <laughs> Oh, boy. In 2012, listen to this. Research reports subsidized religion in the U.S. Do we realize? I thought we were freedom of you know, church and state here. A 2012 study shows that religions receive at least 40% of the huge subsidy given to agriculture in the United States, and probably far more. This includes state funding through exemptions from income tax, property tax, investment tax, parsonage exemption, and direct subsidies from faith-based initiatives. Yes, they devote a far smaller portion of their funds to welfare work than secular, chari than secular charities and not much more than corporations. I mean, this is incredible. Did you know in America that the Vatican's getting rich out of the agricultural subsidies? Uh-uh. <laughs> And uh, the home, uh, yeah, uh, incredible story. And also some other religions, like the Latter-day Saints, are getting rich as well. Maybe they're a function of the Vatican as well. I always said it. Uh, the Mormon Church has connections to the Vatican, as well as Scientology and all those other garbage. Uh, we'll look into that story at another time. But here we go with the money. That's all you got to do. But it ain't easy because the great God on earth here it seems to have a closed book when it comes to his bank account. So the one thing is he's not God on earth. He's not the vicar of Christ. It's a sham. And until people admit it and don't pay for him to come to your country, isn't that an injury and insult? Here we are talking about the biggest criminals in the world and we pay for him to come here. Because your government says they are good people. And you're going to believe everything they say, right? And folks, this is just the tip, tip, tip of the iceberg. I'm not even getting into probably how really bad it is. You know, I remember there was a lawsuit. Nobody talks about this either. In three of the southern states about the Vatican being involved with bilking people because they were involved in insurance companies. Out of, billion, out of billion dollars. And they had a bishop that gave a deposition showing how he did it. But did that ever get coverage? I mean, the guy should be, I mean, it was bigger than, uh, hell, Paul Manafort. 
you know the story about this guy now being set up. You know, if you don't, look up Paul Manafort. But this priest said, yeah, we used to take 15%. Here's how we worked the deals out with the scam insurance companies. Now, this case got no light of day. I don't know what happened to it, but that's what I mean. That's one of a few. I'm not even talking about the pedophile stuff. That's chump change for what these guys are involved in. And you can thank, you can thank Donald Trump. You can thank Obama. You can thank all the people that work under him, all the head guys, your Congress, your Senate, all these people who are in the back pocket of these people. And that story, if you start talking about it, you'll, you know what it'll say? That's hate speech. You can't talk about the church that way. That's hate speech. Oh, really? You know what's hate speech? The lies that they talk about and get away with. Because they hate you. But they love running to the bank on lies. That's about the way it is. So again, for all you truth seekers out there running after Alex Jones, running after all these different truth movements, take one minute to figure out where the root cause is. It may help you. And maybe someday, if we ever solve that problem, we'll have clean air like the Native Americans have. We'll have clean water. We'll have an honest system. But you ain't ever going to have it if you don't deal with this problem. And right now, they got their fangs and their tentacles in over 200 countries and probably more. So what do you think the global one world order is going to be without them? Are you kidding me? They're going to be the vanguards, the leaders. And they're going to laugh all the way to the bank. While you go searching for clean air and clean water, good luck. 15 seconds left. My advice to anybody, follow their money as best you can by realizing that they're not open, realizing there's the problem. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.